Hey guys, my name is Alex and today we're going to be looking at the Samsung WB250F smart camera from Samsung. This has an 18x optical zoom, full 1080p video capture and 14.2 megapixel photos too. It's also a smart camera so it includes some Wi-Fi sharing features that I'll get into a bit later on. To give some background to why I bought this camera, um, I needed something small and light and portable that I could throw in a bag and take good video and pictures. Um, especially for stuff like concerts where in the UK you can't take in a big DSLR with a detachable lens um, so you need something small that you can carry around that takes as good photos as a DSLR. So I did my research and I found that um, Samsung cameras are pretty good with their sensors. Um, I was going to opt for another Canon but a smaller compact version uh, but the prices came in at like £300 uh, this one, the cheapest I could find was £103 if you bought it in cobalt blue. Uh, white was 107 which is this one here, but I think it looks a lot nicer than the blue one. And it also comes in red and grey, but they are quite hard to pick up unless you're in America, I believe. Now this is the outside of the camera. Uh, to give you a comparison of size, um, it is actually quite a thick camera compared to most compacts nowadays, um, but it will still fit in a camera bag, obviously. Um, for the size, we can compare to a iPhone 5S, and you can see that it's maybe three iPhone 5Ss in thickness, um, and height-wise, if I turn this way, you can see that it's just maybe an inch and a bit uh, shorter than a 5S too. So three iPhones in thickness and almost one whole iPhone 5S in height. It is a pretty small and compact camera to throw in your pocket or in a bag. It also comes with a wrist strap inside the box too and it is charged directly with a micro USB cable. No need to take the battery out the bottom but uh, you can do that. It comes with a separate battery here and also space for an SD card too. The back of the camera has a 3 inch screen which is also touch screen so you can use the dial like you would on a normal camera but you can also use uh, the touch screen too which I'll demonstrate now. You can see you can use the screen to touch to autofocus so it will change location of the focus and you can also press buttons on the side of the screen too uh, to turn on things like touch autofocus and also to link up with your smartphone. Um, which I'll demonstrate later too. But the touchscreen is actually pretty responsive and you can use it to type in email addresses and uh, passwords and stuff like that too for the Wi-Fi features. This is the lens on the front of the camera. It is a Samsung branded lens uh, they've made themselves and you can see as we zoom in on a subject, uh, if I put it to auto mode, That's at full 18 times zoom, and then we can go even further digitally, all the way up to 36 times digital. Uh, but the camera, the photo quality, sorry, uh, goes down to 3 megapixels rather than 14. This camera also has a pop up flash, which we can see there. Pops up right out of the body. Uh, it's pretty bright for an LED flash, and it also has the ability to be manipulated uh, like so. So you can bounce light off walls and stuff uh, if you know how to do it and you want to do that kind of thing to produce some good effects on your camera and then it pops back in on like a hinge and snaps back into place. Now this is video and audio directly from the camera. Uh, a lot of people buy their cameras sort of this size for uh, vlogging or for taking video and you can see that this is in full 1080p and the audio quality is not too bad. Um, most people will buy a separate microphone uh, for that type of thing. But I'll overlay a few of the photos on screen now too. And these are 14 megapixel shots taken. Uh, there's a few where I've zoomed in uh, all the way to 18 times. And you can see that the quality is still pretty decent uh, all the way that far zoomed in. Here's some video to show that you can zoom while recording and also just how quiet the zoom feature is on the camera.
So let's now discuss some of the software features of the camera. The top of the camera has got a dial you can use to select which mode of capture you want to do. Automatic is really clever in how it detects the environment and sets up the photo perfect for the environment that it's seeing. But you also have uh, more fine-tuned adjustments that you can do, including controlling the aperture, uh, shutter speed, the f-stop values, all that stuff to the manual side of a compact camera. But there's also some fun stuff like smart modes, where the camera will automatically set up the settings it needs for the environment you choose. So there are shots like low light shots, sunset shots, uh, panoramas you can do with the camera too, macro, action freezes, and each one's got its own unique settings for the, uh, the shutter speed and uh, things like that to get the best picture for what you've chosen. You can also do best face which will capture the best face uh, for each person in a photo so you can take multiple pictures of the same scene and then it will splice together the best faces for the scene and you also have some even more fun features like photo filters uh, split shots, magic shots basically you can edit photos within the camera rather than exporting them to your computer but the camera has been dubbed as a smart camera and there are some features that it has uh, to give it this title you can send photos via email Facebook, Picasa, SkyDrive, all from within the camera. Also back up the photos automatically to your computer over the air. And you can use a smartphone via an application to act as a viewfinder for your camera and also to transfer photos directly onto the smartphone either as you're taking them or after you've taken them just by linking up via Wi-Fi. Overall, this camera is fantastic value for money if you're looking for a small, compact, digital camera with the abilities of a DSLR, such as the option to change shutter speed, aperture speed, uh, f-stop values, stuff like that. This camera is ideal. It's currently around the £100 Mark II, so it's not entirely out of uh, most people's price ranges, where a DSLR can be sort of like £400, £500 in that sort of area, plus lenses. Um, I would say because of the brand name Samson and because of features like the 18x optical zoom and the Wi-Fi um, built-in features too, uh, this is a great camera for anybody who wants to take photos, whether you're uh, experienced and need something small to just carry around with you or you're a beginner to photography or video editing, this camera is perfect for you. Uh, any questions you can leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them, but thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.